five after ten and respect everybody's time, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, Let me say one thing real quick. Uh, Ryan, are you ready? Oh. Give me, uh, give me just a second, uh, okay. and I'll give you the, the go ahead. Okay. Yeah. A little bit bona fide. <laughs> We have a resolution. Uh, uh, you guys are good to go. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Ryan. <clears throat> okay. Once again, welcome to our uh, uh, TAC meeting of the High Court Metropolitan uh, Planning Organization. Uh, my name is Neil Grimes. I'm the, the chairman of the, of the organization, and I, along with uh, Greg Venable and uh, Mark and, and John, are here at High Court City Hall and enjoying the rest of you on uh, Facebook at home. My gosh, what a collection of books. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and I would ask, uh, uh, I would, First off, I'm going to, I'm going to start with uh, the, the uh, comment about the ethics statement, and we'll get into a couple of administrative things. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, in accordance with the state government's ethics act, it's the duty of every TAC member to avoid conflicts of interest. Does any TAC member have any known conflict of interest with respect to any matters coming before the TAC today? So please identify yourself and the conflict and refrain from any participation in the particular matter involved. Since I can't see everybody, if anybody has any problem, please uh, let us know. Mr. Chairman? Yes. This is Mike Fox. I would note on my, I was having trouble getting in under my regular invite, so uh, our new division engineer, Wright Archer, was kind enough to flip me his, and so I'm showing up as Wright also, but uh, uh, it's not Wright. He, Wright has his own uh, video, so, and I'll introduce Wright at the appropriate time later in the meeting. All right, all right, thank you very much. I think your admin, whoever's running the meeting, can actually change my name uh, if they, uh, if they know how to do that, but it's that's not important to me. I just wanted you to know I was here. Well, we'll either get your name changed or, or blip you off of it, sir. <laughs> um, we are uh, not only having a Zoom meeting this morning, but it's also being uh, streamed over Facebook. Uh, so we will, for the for the benefit of, of any folks that aren't familiar with our uh, organization and the way we conduct our meeting, I'm going to give a few little administrative things. And I would ask too that if everyone would please mute themselves until you want to say something and then unmute yourself and call attention to me. I cannot see at all everybody uh, that's participating. Uh, so if you wave your hand, it's not going to do any good. But if you will unmute yourself and, and announce yourself, I will certainly recognize you, okay? Um, and that'll keep a lot of uh, other distraction uh, dog is barking and all that kind of stuff off with us too. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone. Uh, this committee is charged with reviewing and approving the plans and programs for the High Court Metropolitan Planning Organization. For specific plans that come before this committee, we also conduct public hearings as required by our public participation policy. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and the resulting state restrictions on public gatherings, the committee is meeting remotely in accordance with state law. This necessitates some changes in our normal meeting procedures. And if you'll allow me, I'll take a minute to, to explain those. Um, I am one TAC member, and as I said, I am here at High Court City Hall, and we have, looks like maybe eight, eight uh, other TAC members uh, joining us remotely. That does qualify as a uh, um, quorum, so we will continue with the meeting. Um, items on the agenda will be heard, and I cover my nose, but if anybody knows how to wear glasses without fogging them up with these things on, let me know. Um, 
Items on the agenda will be heard as normal with uh, a member of the MPO staff presenting the summary of the agenda item, followed by the staff's recommendation. For those items on the agenda that require a public hearing, a public comment period for these items will extend for 24 hours beyond the conclusion of this morning's hearings. And today we have three public hearings. For that reason, I'm in. Okay. For that reason, the TAC yeah, it's on the 18, 818. will not be voting on any of this hearings. Again, I'll ask everybody to please mute themselves until they need to uh, be recognized. For that reason, the TAC will not be voting on any public hearing item on the agenda. Instead, and mark this on your calendar, this meeting will be recessed, not adjourned. It'll be recessed until this Thursday, August the 27th at 10 a.m. when we will reconvene by Zoom again. This will allow the commission to further discuss any additional information or comments submitted by the public before making that official vote, that official decision on these items. Okay, everybody kind of understand? We have not done this in the past with these Zoom meetings because we have not had a public hearing. Uh, so we'll get into the, to the business uh, of the meeting. Uh, and the first item of business is a consideration of the June 23rd TAC. Let, let's do a, um, a roll call vote. Let's, let's, let's do a roll call of members. Uh, members, uh, this is Greg Venable speaking. Um, when I call your name, could you please let us know uh, if you're attending? If you're attending here in person, just say here. If you are attending remote, just say remote when I call your name. Any member that I do not call, please let me know uh, and we'll get you a report. I'll start with Alan Perdue. Remote. Fred McClure. Remote. Mike Fox. Mr. Fox? Yes, sorry, I was having trouble finding the unmute button. I'm here <laughs> remotely. Thank you. Larry Warlick. Mr. Warlick? Many down mute yourself. I'm back to Mr. Warwick. I know he's on. He was. Tobin Shepherd. Uh, I, I'm here by telephone. I don't have a camera. Okay. But I see you. you. Thank you, Mr. Warwick. Tobin Shepherd. Shepherd remote. Martha Wolf. Remote. I think we have the mayor of Trinity on. Rich. Uh, we're here. Remote. Remote. Neil Grimes. Here. <laughs> Is there anyone on the call that I do not call out? Dale Fry. Mr. Chairman, Dale Fry from Randolph. Thank you, sir. You're remote. I see you, but I don't, and I'm in front of the camera, but I don't think you see me. Okay, we can hear you, Mr. Fry. That's good. Okay. All right. Any other TAC members present? Um, I also saw a text that the uh, Mayor Wagner was on, but he was having trouble with his audio. Oh, uh, now he says he's fixed it. So, yeah, I can't. Uh, I see all of you, but I can't have audio and the camera at the same time for some reason. Okay, that, that's good. We can hear you though, so you we can, we can hear you just fine. Okay. Hey, Wagner, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Uh, any other TAC members? Hey, Greg, this is Pat Ivey. Uh, Lisa Mathis is trying to get in, but is having trouble signing in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Ryan, are you on? Can you send? Mathis, Ryan and I are working right now on um, sending Lisa an invite. Okay. That's good participation. I appreciate everybody doing up. 
even if you are in your pajamas. <coughs> um, we'll go ahead and, and, and uh, address the, the minutes, which is our first action item. Um, consideration of the June 23rd TAC minutes, which you'll find uh, starting on page one, and I will uh, uh, refer to the committee for its, uh, for its disposition. And if you make a motion or second it, please identify yourself. Uh, this is Martha Wolf from Jamestown. I would move to approve the June 23rd TAC minutes as presented. Let, let hold just one second, please. I'm sorry, I have a, a change I'd like to make. Um, Certainly. On page three, item three, that says consideration for approval for amendments to the HPMPO public participation policy. That should be to release that document for public review and comment. It was not approved at that meeting. So it was just to release that document for public review and comment. All right, everybody got that? Under right. consideration of approval for amendments to the MPO public participation policy, PPP, it was uh, last meeting, it was released for public comment rather than approved. Correct. You still make your motion? I would still yeah, make that motion with that amendment. All right, thank you. Shepard, Lexington, remote, second. Thank you. We have a, a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All right, now, those of you TAC members, we're going to do a roll call vote. So, uh, Greg, as Greg calls, give your eyes or nice, but be sure to un unmute yourself and then please remute. Okay? Neil Grimes? Yes. Aye. Martha Wolf? They can hear me. Aye. Just can't see. Evan Shepard? Shepard, yes. Larry Warlick? Yes. Mike Fox? Yes, and I would also note too that Lisa Mathis has been able to join now, so she's on the call. Great. Lisa Mathis? I'm unmuted. Ms. Mathis, can you unmute this? We'll come back to Ms. Mathis. Uh, Fred McClure? Yes. Alan Perdue? Yes. Daryl Fry? Here, yes. Mayor Wagner? Yes. And Mayor Trinity? <clears throat> I'm here. That'd be a yes vote for the minutes. Ms. Mathis, do you have a vote for the minutes? Okay, uh, the minutes have been approved by a vote of 11 to zero. Thank you. And procedurally, I should have asked, is there any uh, amendment to the, or uh, changes to the, uh, uh, agenda, and there is one, and I'll call on Greg for that. So we have a, uh, an, a, an addition to uh, our meeting this morning. I would like to um, discuss a little bit with you uh, our, our division engineer from Division 7, who is uh, officially retired now, I think uh, is, is the case. Mike Mills, are you on the call? Mr. Mills, are you on the call? Uh, no, Chip Vanderzee from the city of Lexington just joined. Okay, thank you, Chip. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead. We have a, a resolution of recognition uh, for Mr. Mills. And, uh, you know, any other folks that want to add anything that they're more than welcome to do. I sent Mike an invitation to the meeting. Um, I'm not sure if he was not able to get in this morning, but um, we have a resolution for his service. Uh, to the NPO. He retired, uh, I think it was beginning August 1st. Um, was, his retirement was effective that day. Um, and we have a resolution. I'll go ahead and read this uh, in recognition of, of Mike and anybody that wants to add anything uh, can, can add on to this as well. Um, we have the, uh, whereas Mike Mills has served the High Point Urban Area Metropolitan Planning Organization 
PCC for two decades, and whereas Mike Mills has retired from MCDOT with nearly 45 years of service, with 21 years serving as NCDOT Division 7 Division Engineer. And whereas Mr. Mills has been a valued partner to the High Point MPO, working with staff to improve and prioritize transportation needs throughout the High Point MPO planning area, the triad, and the state of North Carolina. And whereas Mr. Mills' support has been a critical factor in the development, funding, and in construction of many transportation improvement projects in High Point over the past two decades, including North Carolina Moving Ahead projects, Piedmont Parkway, ARRA funding projects, the I-74 US 311 interchange improvement at NC-68, completion of the I-74 corridor through High Point to US 220 and I-73 north of Ashburn, North Main Street and Lexington Avenue intersection improvement, club road widening, Jamestown bypass, Johnson Street, Sandy Ridge road widening, group highway signing, for the high point on I-40 and I-85, and the resurfacing of state maintained roads throughout the city and traffic signal system upgrades and enhancements. Whereas Mike Mills has also been a strong supporter of the high point furniture market, and over the years, his leadership in Division 7 and his influence with the Board of Transportation have been instrumental in helping the high point market authority and the city operate a safe, reliable, and efficient transportation system for this biennial event. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the High Point Urban Area MPO Transportation Advisory Committee expresses our deep appreciation to Mike Mills for his con contributions to the transportation planning in the High Point area and the state of North Carolina. Would anyone like to add any additional comments to that? Uh, yeah, well, this is Martha Wolf here. Um, and I just learned of um, Mike's retirement last Tuesday, and I was in shock. And um, also very sad, happy for him, but very sad for me. Um, although I'm just in my second term as an elected official, I worked for the town of Jamestown for 21 years. So I have worked with Mr. Mills on different projects going back to 1995. And he has always been just, just so wonderful to work with, so knowledgeable. Uh, and it's just been so good to the town of Jamestown. And, um, and especially here, just the last couple of years, we've had some hard projects. He, he has helped us so much and um, I'm just going to miss him and but I do thank him for his service and I hope he has a wonderful retirement. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else? I'd like to, this is Mark McDonald, Transportation Director for the City of High Point. Just want to voice my personal and professional appreciation of Mike's uh, help uh, here in High Point over the years. We've worked together here for as long as I've been in High Point, 18 years now, and I knew Mike even before that. And uh, as, uh, as has been said in the resolution, it, it, Mike's always been ex extremely uh, cooperative and easy to work with and has made a big difference to, to all of us here uh, on staff at High Point with the MPO and, and for our citizens as well. And we're gonna miss Mike, uh, but look forward to continuing that relationship with Division 7 through Mr. Archer and look forward to, to meeting him and, and getting to know him. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Daryl Fry again. Um, you know, Randolph County is not in Mike's uh, district. Uh, we're in Division 8, but uh, since the Archdale Trinity community, especially is in the High Point MPO, I, I called on Mike a lot and uh, much more than I did our Division 8 director because I, I knew him and I saw him at all these meetings and um, he just been invaluable and uh, he was a, he was a source of a dependable source and uh, could really get things done. I just wanted to pass my uh, compliments and thanks to him and, and my best wishes. Thank you. Anyone else? Very good. Yeah, I, uh, I would like to add something. Obviously, uh, uh, Mike and I have worked together for, for many years, and um, I agree with all the great things that have been said. Mike's truly been a great advocate for transportation in uh, this area, the entire area, even outside of Division 7, and uh, has also been a great advocate for the region. Uh, Mike's been involved in 
probably every economic development project, you know, in the last uh, 20 years uh, that has come through as well. And uh, I know as elected officials, y'all are often involved in those as well. And so, you know, how important it is sometimes to uh, get those over the finish line and sometimes uh, making sure people have good access to it is, is critical. And Mike's always been great about that. Uh, but uh, w one thing that Mike has also always been, you know, so good about is just uh, interacting with average and ordinary citizens. Um, I know as uh, local elected officials, you all get calls like I do when someone's, uh, you know, has a question or, or wants to know what's going on with a project or maybe is upset over the way we're handling a project. And Mike has always been so professional and calm and has listened to folks and taken a great problem solving approach to try to help anyone to the extent that we can. And so I know all of us will miss that because he's just been such a good, uh, a good influence. And he's always a good person to have in the room that can kind of lower the temperature a little bit when, uh, when folks are sometimes upset. So, uh, uh, while we will miss Mike, uh, uh, we, we certainly, everyone would agree he, he deserves the right to retire and to enjoy uh, some free time without uh, worrying about uh, things outside his family. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike has actually got 44 years with NCDOT and he has joked that uh, people have told him he worked two careers, which I would say is probably about right. Uh, and so if anyone deserves to retire, it's certainly Mike Mills, and, and I think that uh, we can all say, like the, like the resolution said, you don't have to travel very far around the Piedmont to see something that he's had a positive impact on. So we all thank him for that and we'll miss him, uh, but we will, we will carry on and he would want it that way. So uh, I'd like to add my thanks and congratulations to him on his retirement. Very good. I just wish he could have joined us today. I absolutely. Maybe you can send him a link and he can watch it again on Facebook Live. There you go. We can do that. If there are no other uh, comments, uh, I will ask for the uh, disposition of this resolution by the, uh, by the committee. I'd make a motion to approve. This is Mike Fox. No problem. I second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any, any further discussion? All right, thank you. If not, we will have our roll call vote. So uh, unmute, say something and remute. Greg? Mr. Neil Grimes? Yes. Aye. Martha Wolf? Uh, aye. Tobin Shepard? Shepard, yes. Larry Warlick? Yes. Mike Fox? Yes. Lisa Mathis? Yes. Fred McClure? Yes. Mayor of Trinity? Rich? Yes. Alan Perdue? Yes. Carol Fry? Yes. Jay Wagner? Yes. The vote is 11 to zero in favor. And thank you very much. And uh, my congratulations to uh, Mr. Bills also. Uh, our next uh, action item is uh, uh, the consideration of revisions to the TAC bylaws. Um, and I will uh, refer to Greg for this and you find it on page six in your uh, packet. We will, uh, as the, the chairman said, there is, it is on page six, but we don't have the bylaws in the packet. I think they did not get put in there. Um, because of the current situation in COVID-19, uh, all MPOs and all public bodies for that matter are having to adjust the way we meet. And uh, part of that would be changing our bylaws to make sure that we are meeting uh, state law with, with those requirements. Um, on our bylaws, uh, these do not have to go out for a public review and comment. So they're just a, a, a two thirds vote from the, from the TAC to approve any changes or amendments to the bylaws. Uh, the only change that I have uh, and I, that I'm proposing in the current bylaws is to add under Article 5 of our bylaws under meetings. 
and that would be uh, to add a section 11 uh, for those meetings. And it would be to um, basically what we're going through right now and how we're conducting this meeting. So if there is a declared emergency, um, the TAC will follow the guidelines established in North Carolina General Statute 166A 19-24, which basically is saying that we will conduct meetings remotely and we'll, we'll proceed with the roll call vote and holding meetings if there are public hearings uh, for 24 or additional hours for people to uh, have a chance to make a comment. So that is the only change and we're just doing that to uh, adhere to current state law. So really the only thing that has changed is one sentence uh, making reference back to the state statute. Correct. And it basically, the state statute says you do things like we're trying to do today. So it's not a, it's not a huge, y'all can see, see that, see the, the, the highlight. That's the only thing that's changing on the, on the whole, what, eight or 10 pages of the bylaws. It's just reference to the state statute. And again, that's, this does not have to go out for public review. So there is no public hearing involved. It just takes a two third uh, majority of the vote uh, to, to approve the amendment. And by saying that, if you want to table this until a further meeting so everybody can take a look at it, that's, that's up to you, or if you're comfortable enough with uh, just saying uh, yes to, to that, that references, because the state statute may change. And that way we don't have to change this whole document every time the state statute changes. Chairman Carol Fry, move approval of the Thank you, sir. We have a motion by Mr. Fry. Second by Purdue. Two seconds. We have a motion to second. Any further uh, discussion? Fantastic. Uh, roll call vote, sir. Sure. No Grimes? Uh, yes. Martha Wolf? Aye. Tobin Shepard? Shepard, yes. Larry Warlick? <clears throat> yes. Mike Fox? Yes. Lisa Mathis? Yes. Fred McClure? Yes. Mayor of Trinity? Yes. Alan Perdue? Yes. Daryl Fry? Yes. Bill Wagner? Mr. Wagner? Sorry, yes. Okay. That is approved 11 to 0. All right. The, uh, uh, the revisions have been approved by vote 11 to zero. Thank you. Uh, next we have uh, Mr. John Haynes with his uh, dog and pony show to tell us this month's amendments to the 2020 to 2029 MPIP, which starts on the uh, seven, but the resolute, the uh, changes are on pages eight, nine, and 10. John? Thank you, Mr. Prime. So this won't be a cat herding exercise. Um, <laughs> the uh, there's two STEP modifications for the MPO project, the D5783 in Davidson County, the Business 85 US2970 bridge for replacement, and also the bridge for replacement over the North and Southern Railroads. Uh, this is delaying right away from FY21 to 22 and construction from FY22 to 23 to assist in balancing funds. Also, U6018, the NC62 interchange improvements in Archdale from Percy Valley to Wint Road. Uh, this is delaying construction from FY22 to 23 to assist in balancing funds. Also, there are 17 statewide step additions uh, placed uh, by the NCDOT. Uh, seven projects are for uh, facility construction projects. Uh, these are the listed as TC0005 to TC0011. Uh, there's also TC012, purchase of electric buses and charging station. Uh, there are four projects relating to capital investment in bus and bus related activities, such as bus replacement. These are listed as uh, TG0002 through TG0005. And finally, TM 0010 through TM0022, there are five projects for 5307 capital operating funds. That is the amendments for this one. 
Any discussion or questions? I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, sir. Mike Fox. We have a motion. Jay Wagner, second. All right. Any, any discussion? All right. Roll call. Go. Neil Grimes? Yes. Martha Wolf? Aye. Raven Shepherd? Shepherd, yes. Larry Warwick? Yes. Mike Fox? Yes. Lisa Mathis? Yes. Fred McClure? Yes. Uh, Mayor Attorney, can you, say, can you say your name again for me, please? I'm sorry, I apologize. <clears throat> Richard McNabb, MC. Capital N-A-B-B. -B. Thank you, Mayor McNabb. Your vote, please. Yes. Thank you. Alan Perdue. Yes. Daryl Fry. Yes. Mayor Wagner. Yes. That has been approved uh, by a vote of 11 to 0. Thank you. Uh, our next action item is consideration to amend the FY 2019 to 2020, one of my favorites, up or up to adjust the 50, 5303 funding. I'll call on Angela for this, please. This is a, basically a, a budget revision that will allow me to do a final change request with NCDOT, basically shifting funds around to where we actually had our planning activities for last just the year, and then we can submit a final claim for reimbursement. Just to add to that, these are funds that were already approved. The total amount of the funding has not changed, but the, the task items in which Angela has uh, allocated those funding did change. That's why we're coming back uh, for this amendment, so she can get reimbursed for those funds. Up what? Unified Planning Work Program. All right, thank you. Any questions of Angela? What is the uh, uh, consideration of the committee? All right, I move approval. Thank you, Mr. Grimes. we be here for a while if it were for you. We appreciate it. Oh I second, Fred McClure. All right, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any further questions or discussion? We'll call for the vote. Mr. Venable? No Grimes? Yes. Martha Wolf? Aye. Evan Shepherd? Shepherd, yes. Larry Warlick? Larry Warlick? I thought? Yes. Lisa Mathis? Yes. Fred McClure? Yes. Mr. McNabb? Mayor McNabb? Yes. Alan Perdue? Yes. Gerald Fry? Yes. Mayor Wagner? Yes. Mr. Warlick? Larry Warlick? Oh, he's there. Mr. Worley, can you hear us? You're going to have to unmute your phone, I think. Or... Yeah, uh, this has been carried by a vote of 10 to 0, not assuming Mr. Worley's uh, vote and hoping he's still there. Thank you. Uh, now we'll get down to the three public hearings. And again, realize that we'll open the public hearing uh, hear any comments uh, and then we'll close the public hearing but we will not vote on this 
Uh, all three will uh, require uh, a recess until Thursday when we will reconvene to take the action on these public hearings. Um, the first is consideration to approve the 2045 Metropolitan Transportation Plan, MTP, and I'll call on Greg for an overview and then we'll have the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the High Point MPO uh, MTP was last adopted in 2015. That was our 2040 MTP. Federal law requires that uh, we update this plan every five years. The plan is financially and fiscally constrained. We have horizon years. Uh, obviously, our, our overall horizon is 2045, but we have projects uh, that are to be completed in 20, by 2025, 2035, and 2045 and it also has to be financially constrained. Our, our new horizon year, as I mentioned, is 2045, and we work with our federal, state, and local partners to update uh, the plan. It was released for public view and comment on June 15th, and it lasted until uh, July 31st, which we have to make meet a minimum 30-day uh, public review and comment period. Uh, usually when we, when we hold these meetings, uh, we do public involvement, we can hold uh, in-person meetings, but because of COVID-19, we had uh, some difficulty doing that. So we decided to hold an open house type meeting and, and have information available in the lobby here at City Hall. Um, that way people were coming in, anybody that wanted to come by could come in and take a look at our maps. Uh, we could social distance if there was anybody who wanted to have any discussion uh, uh, in that regard. We had a, um, not many people, but we had a couple people sign in. Um, to, to review our plan and program. We also uh, advertised everything on our social media uh, sites. Um, and we did receive uh, two comments uh, from one gentleman um, that was uh, fairly negative. Um, he was not happy with some of the, the funding and some of the projects that we have in the plan. He thought we were um, basically um, looking at the special interest of the developers and things like that instead of uh, looking at what was needed in the area. So uh, we responded to him, um, but we were glad for his comment. Uh, we also had comments from our PAC members, uh, Brian Fulbright and Thomas will gave us a, a list of comments uh, and changes that we have incorporated. Also, uh, Suzette Morales, uh, our new Federal Highway Administration uh, official, uh, gave some uh, really good comments as well. So we've incorporated all those comments uh, into the plan. Uh, we presented this to the TCC at the meeting last week, and they are recommending uh, approval of the 2045 MTP. Staff is requesting approval as well. Uh, the document has been out on our website. I hope you guys all have had a chance to go out and take a look at it. Um, and again, uh, we will take this item up again on the 27th. All right. Um, I've got to open the phone. Okay, all right, if there are no uh, questions or comments, I hereby open a public hearing on this uh, matter and invite anybody that wishes to, to speak. They can make comments. They can make comments on here. Oh, so we just, we'll keep it up 24 hours. All right. They can make quick comments. They can hear us, but they can't make a comment live. That knock is good for 24 hours. All right, the second public hearing is a consideration to approve the Comprehensive Transportation Plan, CTP. And again, Greg, and your information is on page 14. Sure. Um, the CTP, this is the Comprehensive Transportation Plan as opposed to the Metropolitan Transportation Plan. Uh, the main difference between these two plans, uh, the MTP is, is federally mandated, so federal, federal law requires us to, to conduct the MTP every five years. The CTP is a state mandated plan. So basically, uh, whereas your MTP is fiscally and financially constrained, the CTP is not. So there is no horizon years, there's no time frame, there's no regard for amount of funding that's available. It's basically um, our wish list. And um, the way the CTP works, it, it, I, it, it acts as a guiding document for our MTP. Um, so things that we put on our CTP uh, will eventually work its way through and get place on our MTP uh, so that those those items can move forward uh, and, and be funded by NCDOT. So this is kind of a, the first step, if you will, of a project. So if, you have, if your jurisdictions have a project they're interested in, kind of the first step would be to let us know. We put it on the CTP and then go from there. 
Um, basically, we had both the MTP and CTP out for public review at the same time. Uh, it was requested by NCDOT that those documents be uh, approved together because they do uh, work, work with each other. Uh, again, we, we released the document on June 15th, uh, and then it was out for public review and comment until July 23rd. Again, um, we adver advertised the plan on our social media outlets. Um, we received, uh, we didn't receive any public comments on our CTP, but we did, again, get some comments from the PCC. Um, obviously, we've been working on both of these plans for, for quite a while. I think the, uh, the, uh, the CTP, we've been working on that for a couple of years. Um, if you guys recall, the last time we updated our CTP, and most of you were not around at this point, but some of you were, it was in 2010. Um, and basically, that the, the current CTP, which we're under right now, is based off of our old boundary, which at the time did not include the rest of, of Davidson County and, the, and Lexington or Denton. So um, with this update, our boundary uh, will be, our full boundary will be included. Uh, and not only are there changes with our boundary, but there also were changes with NCDOT and the way the CTP is mapped. So um, the mapping is different. Um, there's some, some changes. We now have, uh, for previous, previously, if you guys recall, there was one map for the highway. It was a highway map. Now there are two maps. Um, it's broken out. Basically, you have your facility type map and then whatever recommendations or recommended improvements you want to see. So that's just one of the changes. Again, these are available on our website. Uh, they were out for the, the minimum 30-day public review and comment period. Uh, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Um, and we'll take this item up again uh, in two days on the 27th. The TCC also recommended approval of this plan at their meeting last week. Questions? And lastly, consideration to approve the public participation policy, PPP, on 15, Greg. Yes, sir. So uh, we actually started this uh, update uh, a little over a year ago. We uh, went forward in the office, uh, updated this plan uh, to make it the first, the first reason we want to update it is to make it a little more understandable, easier to understand for uh, the PAC, for our TCC, and the general public. Um, so we, we've done that. Um, we have also, while we're going through the update, uh, with the changes that we talked about before with COVID-19 and the way we handle uh, the public and public meetings, there is um, a, a few changes in there. And this one is in your in your packet, I believe, on page 15. Um, and if you take a look in there, if you have your document available um, on page 15, I made, if you go to actually page 16, I'm sorry, the actual beginning of the plan, there are, uh, the third paragraph down is the new paragraph, which actually it references the North Carolina General Statutes again um, when dealing with our meetings. Um, and we also made one other change you guys recall our public participation policy did not include because it's it's relatively new but we did not have anything in there with reference to our our spot process so um, on page 27 in the document um, we did include um, yes item f on page 27 at the bottom there strategic prioritization office of transportation and our, our methodology that we use uh, to rank our projects, which every time the spot process, each iteration, uh, we're in P6 now, we have to go through and get our methodology approved by NCDOT, and it also has to be, uh, go through a public review and comment process. So uh, that is referenced in there as well. Um, some of the other changes that, uh, that are just fairly noticeable, uh, on page 23 and 24, that table there is kind of just a, a cheat sheet, if you will, which references all of our plans and programs and our requirements for our public participation for those, those documents. So um, again, we had this out for public review and comment. It goes through, uh, because it is public participation, it has to have a minimum 45 day public review and comment period. So we have done that. I think the comment period ended for this document uh, on the 18th, I believe. Uh, so it was out for our minimum 45 day public review and comment. And again, the TAC, also recommended approval of this document at their meeting last week. Were there any public comments? There were not. Okay. Questions? Thank you. A lot of work. A lot of work. Just want to roll. 
Yeah, these three these three will be voted on again uh, Thursday with, with another uh, Zoom, I guess, Facebook combination meeting like we're having now. Uh, this coming Thursday, uh, the 27th at 10 a.m. And I uh, solicit your participation at that meeting also. Thank you. At that meeting, we'll just add one other thing, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, at that meeting, if there are any public comments on any of these items, uh, we will send those out to you guys so you'll have an opportunity to review those comments before you vote uh, on the 27th. <clears throat> All right, Neil, this is Larry Warlick. I, my computer quit on me a minute ago, but I got you back now. Well, glad to have you. <laughs> We're not going to repeat anything you missed. Um, just show up Thursday at 10 o'clock again. Um, all right, our next item uh, for information is uh, Air Quality Conformity Memorandum of Agreement, MOA. Sure. Greg, starting on page 35. Yeah, this is uh, in your packet, I believe. We put that in there, did we not, John? Yeah. yeah. Um, this was basically brought to us by the North Carolina Division of Air Quality. As some of you recall, recall we um, used to be in non-attainment for air quality in this area. Uh, that changed a few years ago. We are now in an attainment and we don't have to meet air quality standards as far as um, with our MTPs and our uh, MTIP and, and, and plans and things like that. Um, but the Division of Air Quality is going through and there are several MPOs in the state uh, that have to do conformity. And so basically what this agreement uh, spells out is what to do and, and the requirements for the MPOs and for the states um, when it comes to air quality conformity. Um, this will not kick in for us unless we go back into non-attainment, which is possible at some point in the future. But the uh, North Carolina Division of Air Quality wanted to get this out and get this approved by all MPOs, whether they're in, a, in attainment or not. So they'll have it available if in the fact uh, that we do go into non-attainment in the future. So um, right now it really doesn't have a lot to do with us, uh, but they wanted to get this approval uh, in place uh, if it was necessary. This is just an information item right now. Take a look at it, read over it. If you have any questions or concerns, give me a call. I'll be glad to answer. And we'll bring these back to you guys for an approval at our uh, September meeting. I'll be glad to answer any questions. All right, thank you very much. Um, we'll go now to our um, agency reports. Uh, Mr. Fox, words of wisdom from Raleigh. <laughs> you might, whatever wisdom I have is coming from uh, uh, North Greensboro today, <laughs> but uh, I do want to take the opportunity to um, welcome and introduce uh, Wright Archer, who's our uh, new Division 7 engineer. Uh, I won't say that he's replacing Mike Mills, uh, because that's not fair to Wright or Mr. Mills, uh, because they're each their own uh, person, but uh, uh, personally, I'm excited to have Wright uh, as our new division engineer in Division 7. Uh, Wright has a long history within CDOT, like, like many of our division engineers. He has uh, plenty of time in the field in various roles. Most recently, he has been working hand-in-hand uh, -hand with uh, Mr. Ivy over in Division 9, and so he is well, for, while, while he may not be as up to speed on the details of our D7 projects yet, he's been in the area and he knows all the issues. And he also has been living in Greensboro for a long time. So he's been a consumer of our D7 projects for a long time. And uh, so I'd like to let, give, give a little, a few minutes to write just to introduce himself. And then also if Mr. Ivy would like to add anything I think that would be appropriate at this time. Well thank you very much and, and obviously Mike Mills uh, that's huge shoes to fill. Um, I started my career back in Division 7 uh, a, a few years ago probably more years than I want to admit. Uh, Mike was division maintenance engineer at the time uh, so I've known I've known uh, Mike Mills a long time uh, and I think Pat, uh, Pat Ivy would echo this. He's a, he's a, a, a huge impact on both of our careers. Um, but, uh, you know, I really look forward into, to coming back. I feel like I'm coming back home. 
I've always lived in Division uh, Division Seven. I've worked in Raleigh. That was a that was an adventure. I, I came to Division Nine um, in the construction side uh, and spent the remainder of my career there. And I've had this opportunity to come, uh, like I feel, uh, come back home to Division Seven. Um, you know, I really look forward into uh, to meeting everyone. I know with the COVID uh, regulations and guidelines, uh, a lot of face-to-face -face meetings uh, won't be happening for a while. But uh, I'm I'm very um, I'm very hands-on. I think uh, you'll you'll find uh, Mike Mills and and my persona and and the way we try to handle things will be very similar. Uh, I like to meet the public. I like to find out what what's that. What what are the needs? You know, what are we hearing um, from our from our folks out there? Um, and uh, I, I can assure you the the transition will be seamless. It'll take me a little while to get up to speed on the on, on some of the projects, the particular of the projects, um, but we're starting that process now. I had a little homework over the, over the weekend. I've been trying to, trying to get caught up, so, uh, but uh, I, I look forward to uh, meeting every one of y'all and, and getting to know you and, uh, and moving forward and, and keeping, uh, keeping Mike Mills' legacy uh, moving forward and also creating, creating our own legacy, so I really, uh, really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Matt, did you want to add anything? Absolutely. Uh, this is one of those typical uh, uh, times when uh, I can say with confidence that uh, Division Nine's loss is definitely Division Seven's gain. I have worked with uh, Wright Archer for many, many years, have basically known him his entire career. We've had a great relationship here. Obviously, uh, Mike Mills, I cannot say enough about uh, that man and his impact on my career and my life. We are truly great friends and uh, I've told him that I uh, consider him uh, really as a big brother. He hired me uh, in DOT uh, at the very beginning of my career on the training program. And uh, he and I, since, uh, since I came to nine, we have had just a tremendous working relationship and great friendship. Uh, that is the great part about Wright going over to Division Seven is that I firmly expect uh, that partnership will uh, will continue. Wright is a great guy, great family man, and of course he is uh, from, as Mike Mike said, from the uh, Greensboro area. So uh, you guys are going to love him. Uh, he is going to do great things in Division Seven, and I will say that I am incredibly proud uh, that uh, that I am able to send him over from nine into seven. So uh, you guys have got a great one. So I look forward to working with Wright as a peer now. Uh, so uh, looking very much forward to that. Thank you, Pat. Um, <clears throat> so I'll give an update on kind of the big picture uh, at NCDOT. Couple things uh, that have happened, as you all know, our board uh, was restructured in the recent legislation, House Bill 77. <clears throat> and we also had some financial changes as a result of that. I'll, I'll address the board first, because it's a little more straightforward and simple to understand. Previously, uh, our board was 19 members, all appointed by the governor with 14 uh, across the state geographically spread out, one per highway division, uh, and then five at-large members, each with a specific area of expertise. <clears throat> the changes uh, add uh, one board member to our board, so we're now a 20-member board, but they change who appoints the members. The governor will continue to appoint the 14 division members uh, across the state, but the other six members, uh, the at-large members, are now appointed by the legislature, and uh, three are appointed by the Senate, and three are appointed by the House. Uh, the governor has appointed uh, all 14 of his board members, and most of the vast majority of those board members that were reappointed were uh, carryovers from the previous board, including Mr. Perkins, Ms. Mathis, and myself, and I will remain the chairperson of the board. Uh, and Mr. Perkins is the vice chairman of the board. So uh, you got all the power right here in uh, in the triad. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna live that up while while it's happening. But uh, all joking aside, uh, I'm glad to have 
both Lisa and Andy back, and I know you know them well, and, and they, they are good board members and, and good representatives of their community. So I'm glad to have them back. <clears throat> we also add another member from the triad. Previously, we did not have any at-large members from the triad, but one of the Senate appointees is a person that I think most of y'all you know, know well because of his long public service, uh, Senator Jerry Tillman has been added to our board. And um, as you know, he's had a long history in, in the legislature and recently retired. And so after that retirement, uh, the Senate appointed him to fill one of our at-large seats. So uh, I, I, one of the assignments I'll be making uh, is um, asking Mr. Tillman to come and join us on, in our High Point MPO board. Uh, to participate. So I need to talk to, uh, I guess, the chairman to make sure that our rules allow that in terms of the at-large, but I think he would be a good representative on our High Point MPO board. Um, he's certainly very familiar with the entire area. So um, <clears throat> we don't have um, all the other uh, appointments in yet. Um, there are uh, two from the Senate, Mr. Tillman and, uh, and former Senator Andy Wells from Hickory, and then two from the House, only one of which has become effective right now, a gentleman named Stephen Rosenberg, who's a businessman from Charlotte, has been appointed by the House. And then the House intends to appoint um, <clears throat> a legislator named uh, Chuck McGrady. And uh, Ms. Uh, Representative McGrady is going to serve in his House seat through the uh, additional budgetary session to deal with COVID things, and then he will resign and join our board. And then there are two remaining seats to be filled, for one each from the House and the Senate. So that's kind of the status of what our board is now. And we had our first meeting uh, of the new board uh, this month in August, and everything went well. And I'm excited about, you know, all our returning board members and our new board members that everyone will pitch in to do what they can for the state of North Carolina in transportation. So the, <clears throat> the other part of <clears throat> House Bill 77 that was uh, really important was the money part of it. And as you've already seen, there are some ripples in what happens at each local area with the money. Uh, we obviously had part of that bill was a, adjusting our budget uh, because as, as you all know, because you're knowledgeable about how transportation works, uh, our budget at NCDOT is not like the re like the budget for the rest of the state where it is appropriated from the General Assembly and they say you have so much money to spend and go spend it and at the end of the year if you haven't spent it, 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 it you have to give it back. Our budget is actually a, sort of a, a spending plan for lack of a better term because we're receipt based in that we don't get funds from the general, general fund. Um, we depend upon the income that comes in from the motor fuels tax, uh, DMV fees and, and sales tax on new vehicles, as well as any federal funding that we receive. So our budget is a good guideline and we hope that we're right uh, most years in terms of what it is, but sometimes uh, in good years, uh, we get in more money than we thought. And so uh, we're, we have more money to spend in bad years and when, when, when things, unexpected things happen like uh, a global pandemic, uh, then sometimes we get in less money, significantly less money than, than we had hoped. I think I'd previously reported that uh, the last three months of the 2019-2020 uh, fiscal year, um, uh, we were down $350 million in those three months. So that's a pretty significant hit to our budget. And so, there were budgetary changes made in that legislation to our budget to basically align um, our budget with reality in terms of the money we had. Uh, so that was one part of it. And, and some of those, like the transit programs and things like that, you see those changes needing to be made as, as well as, uh, you know, hundreds of million dollars out of the new construction budget. Uh, the one change in the budget, which we all thought was a good change was uh, to try to beef up the maintenance funds because that is an area in which it has really been hit hard the last few years by the storms, uh, not only on the coast, but statewide. We've had an unprecedented number of, 
of uh, large rain events that have caused culverts and roads to wash out all over the state, uh, snow events, and then of course everyone knows about the, the, the very expensive and large hurricanes we've had over the past couple of years. And really when what typically happens when we have a federally declared disaster, then we're eligible for reimbursement for most of the funds that we spend, but we don't get it back right away. Um, and in many, in many cases, it is several years before we get that money back. And so our choices are we could either put up a sign and say road closed and wait for the federal government to, uh, to approve us repairing that in three and four years, or we could go ahead and, and, and repair it and get our roads and bridges and, and other infrastructure back to where our citizens can use them and then wait on the federal government to reimburse us. And so that's what we always do. And the nature of these storms has caused a huge drain on our maintenance budget because that's really where that money has to come from. So as part of this budgetary shift, we've tried to beef up that maintenance program, uh, largely to not to increase it so much as to get it back to where if we have a huge storm this fall, we have the ability to respond because that's critical. We've got to be able to take care of our citizens. So that's one of the other budgetary changes. The other changes are, are positive and they're on the, the revenue side in that we were, um, we got some flexibility in some of the limits that we had had on previously existing bonding authority on some of the Garvey uh, bond programs. And, and for those of you who are new to how we fund things, Garvey bonding is essentially a, a chance to borrow and bond against future federal revenues. We've been doing that as have most all states for 25 plus years. It's a great program and we got a little more flexibility in order to be able to, to Im improve that and, and, and do a little more of that. Um, as you know, also we, uh, in the past uh, two years in 2018, the legislature overwhelmingly passed and the governor signed um, the build in C bond program, which was essentially a state version of the federal Garvey program. It allowed us to borrow against our future state funds in order to make in, you know, capital improvements on state highways. Because one of the limitations of the Garvey program is you could really only use it on major US routes or interstates. And we obviously have a lot of North Carolina routes that, that need some work as well. So the Build NC program uh, was really good for that. We were, uh, it's a, the Build NC program uh, is a multi-year program and we generally have about $300 million worth of bonds uh, that we can sell a year uh, for a 10 year program capped at $3 billion. Uh, we were ready to sell that $300 million worth of bonds uh, the, earlier this spring uh, and COVID hit, which kind of caused the world to grind to a halt. So we were not able to sell those bonds. And the way the legislation authorizing the, the bond sales was written, we would have basically forfeited that $300 million. And as you all know, we, we can use that $300 million. And so part of this legislation allowed us to carry that over, as well as um, uh, sell an additional $100, millions of $100 million of bonds early. So for, a to for, for this next year, uh, we'll be able to sell $700 million worth of built NC bonds. And we're in the process currently of doing that. Uh, we're working with uh, the Council of State and the Treasurer's Office and the uh, office of uh, budget and, uh, state office of budget and management uh, in order to you know have all the paperwork right to be able to do that we hope that we'll have approval from the council of state in october and then begin to sell those bonds this year um, and that will be able to have uh, have a dramatically positive impact on what we're able to do project wise so uh, that's the, you know, that's the, the, the legislative news. Um, coming out of that, you also, you know, know that, you know, we've had the, the reduction in the, um, in the maintenance fund for the uh, storms. We've also had the MAP Act cases, which uh, to date, and this number is probably old, but uh, the last time I checked, it was $700 million. Uh, and that's a, that's a big number to come out of your budget. So we've had to scale back our 
uh, construction program in terms of delaying the, the lettings of some projects. Uh, we were able, I think, successfully to keep most, if not all, of our current construction projects going. Uh, and that was a big feat. Uh, if you drive around uh, the triad, you you still see a lot of construction projects underway. And we were proud of being able to do that. But we were, we did have to put on pause some new projects going out. We're hopeful that the bond sales will will improve that. But all that leads up to, uh, we, we need to do an adjustment to the 10 year plan, basically, because our finances are dramatically different than than what they looked like when we last adopted it. And we have a requirement from uh, the federal government, from federal highways, that our 10-year plan be what they call fiscally constrained, which I would translate to, let, late that to mean uh, have a reality based on to it, in that you're not just having a plan that uh, you probably never be able to do, but it's in some way based on your revenue and such. So we're going to be going through that process. Um, uh, our central staff has already worked with our divisions and our division engineers to identify how that would impact projects in each in each area. And the next step is uh, the, you, they'll be reaching out to the different MPOs and RPOs to talk about what that looks like. Um, you know, it's it's like most things in life. There's some good news, some bad news, and some neutral news. There are in any given. Uh, area and I've looked at the whole statewide list. Uh, there are projects that are that are going to be able to proceed on schedule. Uh, there are projects that won't really see any delay that much, and then there are some projects that will be pushed back. So uh, we'll want to get that out to y'all for comment and discussion. And certainly, if there's something about a project that we're unaware of in terms of uh, the issues with it or, or the prioritization of it or such. That's what we want to hear back from, from the MPO and the staff um, before we then uh, ask y'all to approve a modification, which then ultimately our board will do. So that's a lot of information. Uh, sorry to be so long winded. I'll be happy to answer questions. And also I'll ask Lisa Mathis if she wanted to add anything. I think, I know she's on the call. I don't think Andy was able to join us, but I'll ask Lisa if she wants to add anything. Hi, everyone. It's nice to nice to sort of see everybody's faces. Um, I just wanted to add that, yeah, we've had um, a really interesting month. Uh, in one week, we had a hurricane, flooding, tornadoes, and an earthquake, which is pretty exciting. So um, as we know, that affects the DOT um, in great ways for sure and I actually heard we might have a meteor coming but you know we're going to get to that in November so um I we did have a pretty wonderful um Moby Awards uh ceremony uh, which you know talks about our, our multimodal and it sort of celebrates those um feats if you have a chance to watch that because it wasn't we weren't able to do it live. The, um, they made a wonderful, wonderful video that sort of celebrates um, our winners, but it also, I found it very inspirational. So I think, you know, if you can, if you can watch that, I think that um, it might serve to, um, to give you some creative ideas for other projects down the road. But um, anyway, I'm happy to be reappointed and it's nice to see everyone. I think Mike covered everything really well and um, here we go. Can't wait for COVID to be over. All right. Thank you very much. Any questions for either of those fine folks? Uh, yeah, Martha Wolf here from Jamestown for Mike Fox. I was just curious on the MAP Act. Do you have any estimate of how many cases uh, are still out there or how long that may go on to before it's settled? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> we obviously know how many cases are still pending, and I don't have that number in front of me right now. It is, we've obviously settled in the hundreds, and there are hundreds that are still out there. Uh, I will say that we have, um, we had to make a priority of settling those cases that had the potential to stop projects, uh, and a lot of those were 
uh, on the existing loop projects and Pat can, you know, attest to that. There were some, there were some cases that if we didn't resolve those, he, he was going to have to send the bulldozers home and we don't right. like to do that. Um, right. But um, I'll get that information for you. Um, there, there is, <laughs> this is where it gets a little complicated uh, as any of the lawyers on the phone might know, there is the possibility that people may file additional cases, um, you know, to try to reach back and, and uh, say, I should have gotten paid this, even though I settled my case years ago. Um, and so we're kind of waiting to see what happens with that. I don't know how much of that will be involved, but we do have some feeling for uh, the number of cases left because obviously we know where we need to build a road and we know what properties are impacted and we feel comfortable that the vast majority of those have filed the claims that they're supposed to claim. We're hopeful to wrap this up in, in the next 12 months or so. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, just one more thing. I would like to um, welcome Wright Archer and town of jamestown certainly looks forward to actually meeting you and working with you thank you very much <laughs> all right thank you again and congratulations to mr fox mr perkins Ms. mathis and hopefully soon mr tillman we appreciate uh, congratulations on your reappointments and uh we very much appreciate your participation on this board you add a whole lot to it uh and uh welcome uh, right, and you're on. Let's see about Division Seven. Since I'm, I'm new to the division, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this over to Stephen Robinson to to help me out this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. This is Stephen. Can you hear me all right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, on page 66 uh, on the Division 7 project starting, um, there's very little changes on the yellow border sheets. If you go to the second page of that, the only adjustment that we've had since our last meeting was um, the first one on the second page with the yellow banner, U6018, which is the interchange improvements at NC62 and I-85. Um, with the realignment of the intersections of Kersey Valley Road and Went Road. That has been delayed by six months, so the let date has been changed to December of 2022 from June of 2022, and the completion date has changed from fiscal year 2024 to fiscal year 2025. Um, aside from that, and then the um, updated construction projects with their percentages complete, um, and what is included in the packet, I do not have anything else to add, but we'll uh, We'll open it up for questions if there's anything I can help with. Questions for the, uh, our comments for Division 7? All right, thank you very much. That was your free pass, right? <laughs> All right. Um, Brian, you comment on Division 8? Good morning. We also have Kathy with us here from Division 8. And we are on page 71 with the green banner. And most of these project schedules have been affected by the recent STIP reprogramming, but I'll let the uh, MPO discuss that uh, when they're ready. I could go over more if, if needed, but if you have any questions, be glad to answer them. All right, hearing none, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Ivey, Division 9. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. My report begins on page 72. Uh, I'll briefly say that uh, the schedule changes that we are aware of are shown in red. Uh, on page 72, just bring everybody an update on I-5793, which is the pavement rehabilitation project on Interstate 85. We're almost uh, wrapped up with that. Uh, the contractor is uh, beginning work on uh, finalizing the pavement markers. Um, uh, uh, completing the joint work out there should be completed by the end of October. The only other thing I'd like to add, a uh, project that will have some impact to traffic, we're working directly with, uh, with Davidson County on a uh, project to install new runway lighting for the Davidson County Airport that will re require, as, as many of you have seen already, some lane closures at night on I-85. And right now we anticipate all that work uh, to be completed probably by the end of September, early October. 
subject to any questions, that's uh, my report, Mr. Chairman. Questions? I have one for you, Pat. Uh, of course, I know money is an object everywhere, but what's the status of removing the, I, the business 85 signage from 2970? Um, of course, we uh, we did some of that with the uh, project to uh, to install the signs for Interstate 285. The project, the remainder of the signs, of course, the majority of it is in uh, Division Seven. I know that a lot of that is tied to future projects, tied to to their loop and the completion of the loop. I'm not sure um, Mr. Archer can dig into that and uh, see what the status is. But um, it, it's a little bit slower over there because of the immense number of signs, particularly the large overhead signs that are fairly costly to redo. So it will take a little bit longer, but we did complete the majority of that uh, on the uh, southern end. And, uh, and we will continue to remove those in Davidson County moving forward. But Division 7 does have quite a bit of work to do on their end that will take probably a couple of years to get completed. All right, thank you. Any other questions for any of the three divisions? And we have a new Federal Highway Administration uh, representative, Suzette Morales. Uh, any comment? Hi everyone, um, there are no FAW um, updates at this time like that report. Um, uh, DOT plans, Transportation Planning Branch, Michael, I think you're on. Yeah, good morning everyone, Michael Abuya. Um, my report is on pages 77 and 78. In addition to that, I don't have anything else. Thank you. Any questions for, for Michael? And now our regional, our local transportation folks, uh, ITRAN, Angela. No report. Okay, and Mark has nothing to add. Uh, Davidson County Transportation. Hi, Richard Jones here. Yeah, I have nothing to uh, add today. Okay, thank you, thanks for coming. Uh, RCATS. And Scott Park. Yes, sir. Good morning. Scott Ryan here. Just wanted to, uh, your uh, information is in your packet. So, a couple items just to share to the MPO as well as some upcoming activities with part is uh, we have some of our rural routes that have not been reestablished as part of COVID 19, but that's coming up in September. Uh, for all of our routes, we'll be keeping a close eye with regards to our service levels uh, and um, it's hard to say efficiency because we're all trying to deal with many different things uh, as we're all uh, certainly coming back and trying to recoup with, with regards to COVID-19. But uh, our services and then our, in our protections, that's still something we're dealing with on a regular basis. Uh, some other items that will be coming, you know, in High Point as well as our other triad MPOs uh, is expanding what our purpose and, and activities are uh, with regards to PDM. Uh, COVID-19 has had a significant impact with our van pool program operations in the triad. Uh, we, we essentially have a percent loss with regards to our van pool groups, uh, but we have some other activities that are coming from NCDOT on transportation demand management. So, uh, so there'll be uh, quite a few of adjustments that we're all dealing with, but we will certainly keep everybody up to speed on how we uh, certainly do our improvements of mobility the best way we can from our standpoint. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Is there any other business? All right. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. I'd like to thank the City High Point for having this on Facebook. I'd like to thank any, any of those that followed the meeting on Facebook. I'd like to thank the staff. Uh, get a motion and a second for recess yeah. meeting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I need to announce that uh, we will resume this meeting upon the proper motions um, to resume the meeting this coming Thursday, 
August 27th at 10 a.m. I think you've already got the log on information. Um, you may want to just send it out again so yeah, there's no confusion. We'll that. Uh, and our next meeting will be, after that will be um, in September 22nd. And it may be like this again, and we may meet in person, who knows. Um, again, I will now, unless there's nothing else, I'd like to entertain a motion to recess this meeting until 10 o'clock, August the 27th. Shepherd, so moved. <laughs> Math is seconded. All right, I have a motion and a second. You want to roll call or just anybody yes, say that? Roll call. All right, roll call. Neil Grimes? Yes. Arthur Wolf? Aye. Tobin Shepherd? Shepherd, yes. Larry Warlick? Larry Warlick. Mike Fox. Mike Fox, please. Lisa Mathis. Yes. Fred McClure. Yeah. Ms. McNabb, Richard McNabb. Yes. Alan Perdue. <laughs> Carol Fry. Mayor Wagner? Yes. Nine to zero. We will our stand recess and thanks for hanging around. See you Thursday. Thank you.